Hey guys, welcome to the Max Invest YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be going over what happened with Solana over the past couple of days. Now, after that, we're going to be discussing what happened to the Oracle networks on Solana. When Solana went down, this had some very, very dire consequences for some of the other Oracle networks. Now, we're going to be comparing and contrasting these Oracle networks with Chainlink and talking about why something like this could never happen to Chainlink and how Chainlink is so far ahead of the competition, it's ridiculous. Of course, if you enjoy the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, join the Discord channel down below, and remember, nothing in this video is financial advice. Essentially, what happened to Solana is the chain got shut down. Solana's chain stopped producing blocks for a time period of 16 hours. As a direct result, in this 16 hour time period, nobody was able to use the Solana chain. They just had to wait and watch and hope Solana came back online so they could continue using their blockchain. Now, the reason that Solana went down is because it tried to process 400,000 transactions per second. Now, you might be thinking, how did 400,000 transactions per second even go into the Solana blockchain? That doesn't make any sense. That seems like way too many transactions, and that's like 10 times Visa. So, essentially, what happened was this was actually a spam attack. There were a bunch of computer program bots, and all of these bots were programmed to go onto Radium. Radium is Solana's borrowing and lending protocol, and all of these bots went onto Radium, submitted thousands and thousands of transactions, went back and forth, and eventually Solana's whole blockchain crashed because of this. Now, Solana is susceptible to spam attacks, and a lot of blockchains are working against spam attacks. The reason blockchains like Ethereum can't be spam attacked is because it costs way too much in fees to spam attack Ethereum or most other blockchains. Solana is one of those blockchains that is unbelievably low fees because it's completely centralized, and this made it vulnerable to a spam attack. Now, there are other ways of preventing and combating spam attacks even with lower fees, however, Solana clearly aren't too good at a lot of these ways, and Solana was spam attacked and the blockchain went down. One thing that I've been seeing with Solana is before this incident, a lot of people were convinced that Solana was partially decentralized. A lot of people didn't think Solana was fully centralized, and there were a fair few validators to it. However, what a lot of people don't know about Solana is Solana has no slashing in place, and it only takes 18 validators to shut down the entire network. Now, the developers on Solana essentially shut down the network, and Benjamin Cohen put it nicely here in a tweet, and he said, to be clear, there is nothing wrong with being centralized, but we should distinguish between decentralized decentralization and decentralization in name only. Solana does want to decentralize over time, and I do hope that Solana do the best over time. I hope their blockchain goes well. However, we should be clear, and Solana is not decentralized right now. They were able to shut down the blockchain in a centralized fashion and start it back up in a centralized fashion. Essentially, what Solana did is they hosted a little Discord call with all of the validators. All of the validators on Solana coordinated with each other, and they restarted up the chain. Now, this doesn't seem like decentralization at all to me. This really does seem like centralization, and that's something that a lot of people should know about Solana that a lot of people don't know. Anyway, I don't want to dunk on Solana a little bit too much in this video, as I do like Solana's blockchain. I think it's good. I think it's one of the better blockchains out there. However, it is centralized and it has just suffered a spam attack and it hasn't responded that well to it. One of the last things that I'll say about Solana shutting down is I found it a little bit disappointing to see Solana's CEO, Anatoly, going on Twitter and talking about a lot of other blockchains. Obviously, Solana is centralized and there is a CEO of Solana Labs, and he even went on to say that the same thing happened to Ethereum during the DAO attack. Now, this is completely untrue. Ethereum has never stopped producing blocks in its lifetime. Ethereum has never been completely attacked and shut down in the same way that Solana has. And I did want to clear this up, as I do think it's a bit rude and a bit weird that the Solana CEO is trying to say the same thing happened to Ethereum when it literally did not. 
Now, this brings us on to what happened with some of the Solana Oracle networks. Now, one of the big Solana Oracle networks is called PIF Network. Now, PIF Network did not do very well when Solana shut down, and it showed a huge design flaw in PIF Network, and it showed why Chainlink should be used on Solana a lot more, and why there's essentially no need for a lot of these other Oracle networks, because they really don't work that well. Now, PIF Network's Oracle model is very poor designed. Essentially, PIF Network is completely reliant on Solana. Right now, all PIF Network does is it delivers Oracle data to Solana. This means that if Solana is down, well, PIF Network stops delivering Oracle data. Now, hypothetically, PIF Network could deliver data to other chains. However, the way that PIF Network will deliver data to other chains is they will deliver data to Solana first, and then they will bridge this data across to all of the other chains. As a direct result, if Solana goes down, PIF Network will once again go down and the data on other chains will also go down. This would be very dire for applications on other chains who are using PIF network because Solana could go down and it would bring down their Oracle. This is quite a bad design and it's very different to the approach Chainlink has taken. So, in my opinion, I do believe that this Oracle network is probably going to become completely redundant, and Chainlink is launching natively on Solana in the next couple of months, so it does look like Chainlink is completely going to overtake this. Right now, I'm also pretty confident that Chainlink is used even more than PIF network on Solana as well. So, Chainlink God highlighted this in a couple of tweets. He said this highlights why the model of delivering Oracle data to just one blockchain and then bridging it to other chains creates external dependencies. This issue could happen for any Oracle solution that delivers data directly to just a single blockchain that is not live. And this is what a lot of other Oracle networks do because it's a lot easier to do, which we obviously know is faulty design. Chainlink God then proceeded to say that Chainlink Chainlink Oracle networks deliver their data directly to each blockchain network, ensuring there are no cross dependencies. So even if one blockchain is down, Chainlink networks on other chains are not affected. Excited to see Chainlink Oracles launch natively on Solana this year. Now this put it quite well, however I've got to be honest, this confused me a little bit. And this is because in my mind before this, I thought Chainlink was a little bit more dependent on Ethereum. and this meant that if Ethereum ever went down, well, Chainlink would probably also go down as well. So I had to do a fair bit of research to iron this out exactly, and I think I found the exact solution. Chainlink God's tweet here is slightly misleading, as Chainlink is somewhat dependent on Ethereum, but it's in a very different way to PIF Network. So the next couple of slides are going to be a little bit technical, but this is essentially what I've found. The way that Chainlink works is Chainlink clients will put the data wherever it will be received. For example, if Avalanche wants some Oracle data, Chainlink clients will just directly give them that data and it won't seem like it's going through Ethereum. On the contrary, if individuals want data in other chains, however they're using PIF network, PIF network needs to give the data to Solana and then bridge off that data to other chains. This is a very distinct difference between Chainlink and PIF network. Now, this is still a little bit misleading because all link is on ETH and it's fully collateralized on ETH. So essentially, Ethereum is still the final settlement layer. All link is on ETH and then it's distributed off to other networks, however the Chainlink clients don't necessarily need to know this. Now, this is essentially because Link is still an ERC20 token, Ethereum is Link's native blockchain, and Ethereum is the final settlement layer for Link. Now, this is slightly different to PIF network, as Chainlink is somewhat dependent on Ethereum, it is the final settlement layer, however, PIF network is wholly dependent on Solana. Now, this does extend a little bit, because Chainlink has a lot of battle test design proof, that means if Ethereum ever goes down, Chainlink can continue to operate. Essentially, if Ethereum goes down or Ethereum stops operating, one could just redeploy the link contract. They could redeploy this link contract on any other blockchain. So, let's say hypothetically Ethereum goes down just like Solana did. Well, the link contract will just be deployed to another chain if social 
consensus agrees this is the right thing to do, and then that other chain will become the new settlement layer. Now, one other important thing to note is that Solana went down is completely different to Ethereum going down, and this is because Ethereum has never gone down, Ethereum will never go down, and it doesn't have the same problems that Solana has with centralization. So overall, Ethereum has no risk of going down, and even if Ethereum does go down, Chainlink is still able to continue operating as the link contract is instantly able to be redeployed to another chain. Now, this shows that Chainlink's design philosophy and Chainlink's model is a lot better than PIF Networks. Chainlink is still somewhat reliant on Ethereum for final settlement, however Chainlink doesn't need Ethereum. Chainlink can continue to operate without Ethereum and deliver data directly to other blockchains. Now all of the other Oracle networks that I can see are completely reliant on a single chain. This means if Solana goes down forever, PIF Network is down forever. The competition really is a little bit of a joke on some of these other chains and Chainlink really is the leader in this space. So after this PIF network did come out and they started spreading FUD and misinformation about Chainlink, however this is as to be inspected, it's because a lot of these other Oracle networks that are purely running off speculation with $1 million market caps are trying to FUD Chainlink, get a little bit of market share but this probably won't work. However, it was funny to see the Chainlink community fight back, and one good post that I liked was, Hey, PIF Network, since Solana is still down, can you like maybe just tweet the Bitcoin price every few seconds for us? And I found this joke pretty funny. Obviously, PIF Network's price feeds are down, so why don't they just go on Twitter and tweet out the price feeds for everybody to see? Overall, I do believe Chainlink has no competition in the space. A lot of other Oracle networks are running off faulty models, they have very little use case and they're not working very well. Chainlink is a very clear leader in the space and I do believe Chainlink's network effects will allow this to continue and their rate of technological development. Anyway, if you enjoy the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, the links are down below in the description, and thanks for watching the video.